thank each and every person for joining me this evening. I will not be before you long, but I sent out our text this evening or message on what we would have we would speak about. And I didn't know that the day would come when I would actually use a secular song to advertise something that is spiritual. But the truism of it, it is remarkable. And it was from, if anybody knows, the Bob Marley, the great Nestor Marley. And he says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. He says, none but ourselves can free our minds. And this morning, this evening, I want to talk to us about our minds, because it is what has kept kept us captive. It is not the devil. I'm going to tell you that uh, the Bible says uh, there is a sin that so easily beset us. The sin, the sin of man is the pride, is the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, uh, and the lust of the flesh. God did not name Satan. He says the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and that of the flesh. So it is the mind. When we talk about the mind, the Bible uses the mind and the heart interchangeably at times. And if we ought to change our situation, if we must change our circumstances, we must change our mindset. We must change the way we see see God the way we see ourselves, and we have to see through the lenses of scripture. So this evening, bear with me, because it is not the devil that is your problem. Your problem and my problem or greatest problem is ourselves or faulty mindset, or wrong way of thinking. If we can change the way we think, we will change our situations and we will change our circumstances. There is no going around it. That is exactly what it is. Change your mindset and we will change our lives. Let us look at what we're going to talk about today. I read this and this is a book of mine and it is an easy read, Sharon. It is from James Allen. It's called As a Man Thinketh. The book is like this, yay small, 30, 40 pages, five bucks. But the truth that is in it, the truth that will transform you is second to none because it is biblically based. It is from scriptures. And so I want to share this with you and it's called Food for Transformation. And I took it and it, it is an excerpt from the book written by James Allen, As a Man Thinketh. And hear what it, it says. As the plant springs from and could not be without the seed, so every act of man springs from the hidden seeds of thought and could not have appeared without them. Man is made or unmade by himself. In the armory of thoughts, he forges the weapons by which he destroys himself. He also fashions the tools with which he builds for himself heavenly mansions of joy and strength and peace. By the right choice and true application of thought, man ascends to divine purpose. James Allen. This is what we need to know. This is what we need to study and understand. This is why the Bible speaks about faith so much because faith has to do with our thinking. Faith has to do with our mindset. And that's why the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if you want to change your life, Eartha, if you want to change your life, you must first change the way you think. Sharon, if you want to change your life, you must change the way you think. Michelle, the same applies. Everyone under the sound of my voice, Caroline, you've got to change your mindset. If you are going to change your life, Galaxy A31, Gwendolyn, Shakia, you must, and I repeat, you must change your life. Val the same, Annie the same, Monique the same, Jen Harvey, you are the same. You must change your mindset, Jen Harvey, if you are going to change your life. So we are going to look at some things that... 
lots of people don't believe because we have been taught that the enemy is our problem. Okay, if you want to change your life, you must first change the way you think. Prove it, Jen. Okay, did you not know that our thoughts, whatever you do, when temptation comes your way, it is a thought you create it or you it is perceived it is never sin until you act upon it and it is through your thought when the thing comes to you that you say am i going to do this or will i not do it so a thought you reap a word you speak because you first thought so a thought reap a word so a word reap an action you act because you first you spoke and you spoke because you first thought. So you sow a thought, you reap a word, you sow a word, you reap an action, you sow an action, you re reap a behavior or what you and I call a habit. So a behavior, you reap a conduct. So a conduct, you reap a lifestyle. So a lifestyle, you reap a destiny. One thought can lead to your destiny. It is the devil is not your problem. The devil has never been our problems because uh, Jesus won. Jesus whipped his behind on Calvary's cross uh, and he gave us victory and he's telling us to walk therein. Uh, but we have got to change the way we think. Uh, most of the situation and circumstances in your life uh, is as a result of the way you thought. You cannot and I repeat, and I've always said this, and people think it's like a broken record, but I will continue to say it because these are the basics. And sometimes we need to go back to the basics, Eartha. If you go out and look at the trees, you will understand that seed time and harvest is an agrarian law. It is an agrarian principle, agriculture, when I say agrarian. And you will never see mangoes on a banana tree. You will never see plums on an apple tree. And you will never see pears on a pineapple tree because every seed God laid this down in his word that we can only reproduce. Each seed will reproduce of its own kind. I'm going to repeat that. Every seed will reproduce of its own kind. So the hard pill to swallow is you must look at your life. This is a hard pill. Say, Jen, it is a hard one that you're coming with. This is a hard pill. You must look at your life, look at the life you are leading, and privately but seriously ask yourself, what thoughts did I sow to cause me to be where I am right now? Ooh. What thoughts did I sow that has caused me to be where I am? And where you are doesn't mean it is, at, it is bad. It could be that you have sown good seeds years in advance, and now you're reaping the fruits thereof. I remember when I was in college, uh, 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 Caroline, I was broke. I am not going to lie to you. I was absolutely broke. Uh, they would come and they would turn off my lights, but I would light these candles. You know, when you see somebody who died on the street and they have these big candles in a jar, I would light three or four of them and put them by my window and I would study because I knew that I did not want to continue to live the way I was living. And I would go to the university because I went to downstate and I would go over the to study with their lights and I would walk back one, two o'clock in the morning because I had laid in my heart that I cannot continue to live like this and my bills were piled up and the debt collectors would call me but I would shut them out because I knew earth a day was coming that I was going to reap the fruit of my labor and my hard work and look at that, that day. That day has arrived. I don't have to shut my eyes and wonder where the next penny is coming from because I laid some seed in the ground. I laid some seed card called hard work. I laid seeds called studying. I laid seeds called discipline. I laid seeds called tenacity. I laid seed called purpose. I laid some seeds for the future and now I'm reaping the rewards thereof. The devil is not your problem. You can on 
earth and I'm here. That's why I'm here today to encourage you. Whatever tree you see outside, we can dig it up. If you can dig up a physical tree and you can unearth it and you can remove it, so can we remove these faulty thoughts. The Bible commands that our minds must be renewed. The Bible commands that we ought to believe what God says about us. Look at what God says in Joshua 1 verses 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou must meditate in it, in it day and night and observe to do all that is written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things is one of our affirmation in the evening. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and of a good courage. Are you fearful? Hear what God is saying. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee. Oh, Annie will not fail you. Seppi will not fail you. Valley will not fail you. Marcia will not fail you. Monique will not fail you. He will not fail you, Reverend Brown. He will not fail you, Anna. But God has tell me to tell his loved ones, tell his servants. You see, when I prepare this word, the word hits me first. And so don't think I am above the word. Sometimes the Bible, the, the, the Holy Spirit will say, Jen, what are you doing? You're spending your time in futility. You know that's not the thing that you ought to do. So when I prepare this word, it hits me first. I never come to anyone and teach as if I have reached. We are all in this together. We all need the power of God. We all need the Holy Spirit to help us. What are the areas in your life that troubles your mind? What is perplexing your mind, Val? What is perplexing you, D. Thomas? You ought, is it your health? Is it your finances? Is it your diet? Is it your vocation, your profession? Is it your business? Is it that you're poor at relationship? I have a friend and she says, I am wealthy. I am rich in the area of relationships. That is a strong tower in her life. Is it that you are weak in ministry? Then what is it you need to do? Tell me, Jen Harvey. We must get into the word of God. We must find out what God says about you and I in the area that require change. And we must write it down. Write the vision. What is it that you wish to acquire? What is it that you need to change? Where do you want to take your finances? Where do you want to take your health? Has God made it clear to you about ministry? Are you walking in purpose? Do you know why you were created? And I don't want you to tell me to give God pleasure. We were all created for that. What is specific to your calling? Oh, Oh, Minister Dola, what has God said that you ought to do? Go to him and ask him, God, I am weak in the area of my finances. I need strength in ministry. I need strength for the journey. I need you to make it clear, God. But here is what we're doing. We're doing what many of the doctors do. You go to the doctor and you have diabetes and he gives you a pill to control your blood glucose. You go to him and you have high blood pressure. He gives you another pill to control your blood pressure. And so we go to God. God, I am sick. Heal me. God, my finances are drying up. Give me money. No, we are treating symptoms. So what the doctor ought to do is if he gets to the root cause and find out what is causing diabetes, then he will eradicate the diabetes. If he went to the root cause and find out what is causing hypertension, then he can eradicate the hypertension. So when you are experiencing lack, when you are experiencing delay, when you are experiencing frustration in one or more areas of your life, don't say, Father God, I need my rent paid. It may be that you need to ask him that in the immediacy because it might be an emergency. But what you need to do is to know that your solution rest in the inquiry of the five T's. If you want
want to know why your health is poor, look at what you're doing with your temple. If you want to know what you, why your finances are not good, look at what you're doing with your treasure. If you want to know why ministry is so poor, are you walking the truth of God's word? And so you must look at the five T's. Don't say, Father, Lord God, give me money for my rent. Because if he gave you money in January, where are you going to get the rent in February? March and April and December is awaiting you as well. But if we go to the root cause, why is my situation the way it is? And you look, you look, Galaxy A31. You look at what you're doing with your time. You look, Monique, at what you're doing with your talent. You look at what you're doing with your treasure and ask yourself, am I walking in the truth of God's word? And ask the Holy Spirit to partner with you. Ask him to help you. And you come up with a plan presented to the Holy Spirit. Too often, we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to do everything for us. Too often, we just sit and pray, but we have to work. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Show me a man with great faith and I'll show you a man with much work. So tonight we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the mind, for the mind is the battleground. When you see a man defeated in the physical realm, it is because they have already defeated him in the spirit. You and I must change our mindset. If we change the way we think, we will change our life. We have to change the way we think. A double-minded man, the Bible says, is unstable in all his way. The Bible says that the mind is the battleground. The Bible says we must put on the helmet of salvation. The Bible says whatsoever things that are good, whatever th whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever thing is of a good report, if there's any virtue in this, think on these things. The Bible wants us to take every thought captive unto the object obedience of Christ. When the thought comes that says, I'm not enough, you start decreeing and declaring over your life what God says. When the thought says that you cannot have, you start decreeing and declaring that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, that the gold is his and the silver belongs to him. When the Bible tells you that you are inadequate, you tell him, I can do all, when the devil tells you, you said, I can do all things through Christ uh, who strengthens me. Uh, but might I remind you, church, uh, it's not only the devil that speaks to us. Uh, we have a soul. We have a soul. Uh, we have a soul that speaks to us as well. Uh, and so sometimes we give, we put too much blame on the enemy when the thoughts are our own thoughts and we need them to come into subjection to what the Bible says about us. Uh, when you think that you're no good, uh, you've got to remind yourself that you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made, that you are made in the image and likeness of God. We have to start speaking, speaking the word that God says about us. Don't wait until it come to pass. You must speak it into being. When you speak it, you hear it. You hear it enough, you start believing it. Start getting to the word of God and do what God says. I know it may take a little while, but you must remind yourself and you must be cognizant of the fact that you and I did not get into our predicament immediately. It took us some time to get there. And so we must be patient and we must work and God with and partner with the Holy Spirit and God will help us to get out of our situation. Michelle, you're more than an overcomer. You can do it. You can do it. I encourage each and every person under the sound of my voice. God has sent me to encourage you. Gwendolyn, God has sent me to tell you that you're more than a conqueror. God has sent me to tell you that it is not over until he says it's over. He says the battle belongs to God. Just stand still. Do your part. Let us wake up. Let us not fall asleep any longer. We the people call the church. Let us not be lazy. Let us not be indifferent. But oh, let us study to show ourselves approved unto God. Work
workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, we're going to pray tonight uh, that God will help us. Uh, God will help us in our mindset uh, by the power of his spirit. Uh, let us pray, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. Lord, we worship you and we magnify your name. Uh, we thank you, Abba Father, for, for the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Uh, your name is worthy to be praised. Uh, Father God, we bless you. Uh, for there is none like you in the heavens. Uh, there is none like you under the earth. Uh, there is none like you under the waters. Uh, we thank you because you're stronger than the strongest. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, because you're wiser than the wisest. Uh, we thank you, oh Father God, because you're older than the oldest. Uh, indeed, you are the ancient of days. Uh, this evening, oh Father, Lord God, uh, you bid us to come boldly to the throne room of grace. Uh, oh Father, we come boldly, but we come humbly, humbly knowing that you're king of kings, uh, humbly knowing that you're Lord of Lords, uh, humbly knowing that you're the great I am, uh, humbly knowing that you're the governor of the galaxy. So this evening, oh Father God, uh, the Bible says uh, that if we hide iniquity in our hearts, uh, you will not hear our prayers. Uh, I pray this evening in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray for myself as I pray for my brothers. Uh, I pray for my sisters in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray that you will circumcise our hearts. Uh, I pray that you'll cut away everything that is wicked, everything that is vile, uh, everything that is an abomination unto you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray that you will give us hearts like Jesus, uh, hearts that are filled with love, light, and life. Uh, oh, Father, Lord God, we are crying out to you, uh, and we're asking the Holy Spirit to partner with us. Uh, Father, we need change in our lives. Uh, we need, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, restoration in our relationships. Uh, we need, oh, Father, Lord God, restoration in our finances, uh, in our health, oh, Father God. Uh, oh, Lord God, we need, oh, God, you to touch our bodies. Oh, Father, our vacation. We need change, oh God. Change in vacation. Change in profession. Oh, Father, change in business. We need the doors, oh, Father, Lord God, to of God to open wide before us. Father, we need an open heaven under which to live. So this evening, oh, Father God, we come freely confessing our sins. We decree, we, we state, oh, Father God, that we have not always gotten it right, that sometimes we have left you. We have walked away. But this evening, oh, Father God, we are coming because we are asking the Holy Spirit to touch our minds. Holy Spirit, will you not give us the grace? Give us the grace to get into the word of God and to get the word of God into us. For the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The Bible says we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible says us uh, that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, uh, but we must meditate therein day and night uh, and observe to do all that is written therein. Uh, then we will make our way prosperous. Uh, then we will have good success. Uh, Father, we need good success. Uh, we need success God's way. We need success that is sustainable in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we do not want to be above today and beneath tomorrow. Oh, Father, Lord God, we, your people, know uh, that, oh, Father, Lord God, we are more than conquerors uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, so this evening, I ask, oh, God, God, uh, by the power of your spirit, uh, that you will give us the grace daily to don the whole arm of God, uh, that we may put on the helmet of salvation. Uh, Father, for the mind is the battleground. Uh, help us to take every thought captive, uh, captive unto the obedience of Christ uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, help us, oh Father, Lord God, not to be conformed to this word, uh, but to be transformed uh, by the renewing of our minds. Uh, oh Father, Lord God, help us to renew our minds uh, with the word of God, uh, Spirit of the living God, take his supper, uh, dip it in the blood of Jesus, uh, sanitize our hearts, uh, purify our minds. Uh, for the Bible says, let this mind be in you, uh, which mind, the mind that Christ Jesus possessed. Uh, let it be in us in the name of Jesus. Uh, help us, oh Father, Lord God, to set our minds, uh, help us to set our affect affections uh, on things above and not things beneath. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, Father, Lord God, help us not to be double-minded. Uh, for you said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, you said let not that man think he can get anything from God. Uh, help us to keep our minds stayed on you. Uh, so we will be kept in perfect peace. Uh, that we will experience the peace of God, peace with God, and peace from God. Uh, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and I decree over my 
my brothers and sisters, uh, that no weapon that is formed against them will prosper. And every tongue, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, that is risen against them in judgment, uh, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, I condemn it in the name of Jesus. Uh, let us understand that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, uh, but they are mighty through God uh, in the pulling down of stronghold, uh, casting down imagination and every high thing uh, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God uh, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We take every thought captive, uh, every thought in our heads uh, that is contrary to the word of God. Uh, we take it captive in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, the Bible says, finally, brethren, uh, whatsoever things that are true, uh, whatsoever things that are honest, uh, whatsoever things that are just, uh, whatsoever things that are pure, uh, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, uh, if there be any virtue, uh, if there be any praise, uh, think on these things. I pray the mighty name of Jesus uh, that the spirit of the living God will help us to think. Uh, think on the word of God uh, that the spirit of the living God uh, will help us to study. I pray the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Father Lord God, for a change of heart. Uh, oh, Father Lord God, you did it. Uh, the Bible says when the spirit of the living God came upon Saul, uh, you gave him a new heart. Uh, I pray that you will give me a new heart. Uh, I pray that you will give my brothers new hearts uh, and my sisters new hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth let us not waver oh father Lord God the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar let us believe what you have said oh father God about us let us believe what yourself you have said about our situation for the Bible says that you're not a man that you should lie neither are you the son of man that you ought to change your mind have you not spoken and shall you not make it good let us believe oh father Lord God what you have said about our unsaved loved ones. The Bible says that the household of the righteous shall be saved. Let us believe, oh Father, Lord God, that you are the God, Jehovah Jireh. You're the God who provides. The psalmist says, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that, oh God, Holy Spirit, you will come down. You will touch my brothers and sisters. Touch them, oh Father, Lord God. I pray Pray, oh, Father, Lord God, you will speak to them in a still, small voice. Uh, I pray that you will give them the grace not only to hear, but to heed. Uh, for the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice uh, and to hearken better than the fat of ram. Uh, I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, for open doors for them in the name of Jesus. Uh, open their eyes that they may see it. Uh, give them the grace to seize it uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, give them an open heaven under which to live. Uh, let not the he heavens be brown over their head. Oh God, you said you will show tender mercies to whom you choose to show tender mercies to. And you will show loving kindness to whom you choose to show loving kindness. Show my brothers and sisters tender mercies and loving kindness in the name of Jesus. I pray for them this week, oh Father God. I pray that they'll have a week like they have never had. I pray for open doors in the name of Jesus. I pray that you transfer the wealth of the wicked to them. I I pray for new opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you would settle the devil's dust in their lives. I pray, oh Father, Lord God, and go into the enemy's camp. I take back what the enemy has taken from them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For you said, if the thief be caught, he must restore sevenfold. Have mercy upon them in the name of Jesus. We are guilty, Lord God, but have mercy. Oh Lord God, have mercy. Heal, deliver, protect, uh, provide, oh, Father God. Uh, oh, Father, Lord God, quicken us on the inside, uh, the inward part. Uh, empower us to seek first the kingdom of God uh, and its righteousness. Uh, so all other things uh, shall be added unto us. Uh, Father, I cover these prayers under the blood of Jesus. I cover the blessings that have been released for each and every person under the blood. Uh, Father, doing their lives what eyes haven't seen. Uh, doing their lives what ears haven't heard. Uh, do what has never even entered into their own hearts. Uh, and Father, we will be careful to give you the praise. Uh, Father, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for your word that heals us of all our diseases. Uh, thank you, Father God, because you're the God who can be trusted even when you can't be traced. Uh, thank you, Father Lord God, because you're not man that you 
you should lie. Father, whatever goes out of your mouth, oh, Father, Lord God, it will accomplish what you have set forth for it to do. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We praise you and we worship you. We magnify your name, oh, Father God. Thank you because your thoughts towards us are peace and not evil to give us hope and a marvelous future. Father, thank you for the name of Jesus and thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the fire and the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed and let the church say amen. If you have never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, today you must. Tomorrow is owed to none. COVID came, we never expected it. Look at the death, look at the delay, look at the disruption, just look at the confusion. So we have to get ourselves ready because we know not the day, we know not the hour. If there's one under the sound of my voice that has not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you have not given your life over to Christ, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. You will stand before God and you will give account of your life and you will remind you of this evening. He will say, did I not send my servant Jen Harvey? And she urged you to accept the free gift of salvation. So if there's one under the sound of my voice, I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer. Say, dear heavenly father, the Bible says I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I confess that I have been a sinner from my mother's womb but I ask that you will forgive me of all my sins. Wash me, purge me, purify me. I accept the free gift of salvation that was wrought on the cross through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, I open my heart to you. I ask that you will send the Holy Spirit to indwell me. I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. If you have just repeated those words with your mouth and you believe every word in your heart, I welcome you to the body of Christ. I welcome you as my brother and I welcome you as my sister. I urge everyone under the sound of my voice, you must remember that God's thoughts towards you are peace and not evil. He has a bright future planned out for you, but he needs you to partner with him in the person of his Holy Spirit. Call upon the Holy Spirit. Take a piece of pen and paper. Look at what you're doing with your time. Look at what you're doing with your talents. Look at what you're doing with your treasure. Are you taking care of your temple? And are you walking in truth? Einstein says insanity is doing the same thing the same way while we are expecting different outcome. If you do not like listen carefully, this is a pearl for the week. If you do not like your harvest, you must change your seed. If you do not like your harvest, you must change your seed. Now we're going to repeat our two affirmation and we're going to end for the evening. The first is, I am a intellectual being. I am a thinking machine. Folks think, don't you ever allow anyone to think for you. So I am an intellectual being. I am made in the image and likeness of God. I am an intellectual being. I am a thinking machine. The second is I, and put your name in it, I, Jen Harvey, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I and Christ. That's a partnership, ladies and gentlemen. That's a partnership, brothers and sisters. I can do it because Christ strengthens me. This is Jen Harvey of the Huddle. I am having a Sharon that asked me, and it was basically confirmation. So January 7th, the mark of the new year, I'm having an all night prayer. All night, it's a Friday night. We begin at 11, we end at six, all night in the cathedral. And then when we leave at six, you get to take home your Caribbean breakfast, your 
cook up sawfish and ackee and your fried dumpling and your liver and your plantains and your tea and your apple juice. You get to take it home. So you go home and you just have an amazing breakfast and you go to bed. But we, if we are going to be victorious in the new years, the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? So the foundation of 2020, 20, 2022 must be planted securely and firmly on the solid rock called Jesus Christ. So mark your calendars. January 7th is a Friday night all the way into Saturday morning is going to be praise, prayer, and a prophetic night. We have a live band. The first two hours is praise and worship. The next three hours, nonstop praying. And the last hour, a prophetic hour. You don't want to miss this. Amen? This is Jen Harvey of The Huddle. Until we meet again, may the peace, presence, power, purpose, provision, protection, promises, and providence of God rest and abide permanently with you is my prayer. Friends, I love you. Go forth and thrive.